is to always treat underlying cause. So if it is a prolactinoma, we know there are drugs to treat prolactinoma. If there is an indication for surgery, we should offer them surgery. If it is caused by a drug, we should make all attempts to stop the offending drug. If that is not possible, we have to switch a class of drug which is not known to cause hyperprolactinemia. In any case, if you are suspecting drug-induced hyperprolactinemia, do give a drug withdrawal trial. So usually after drug withdrawal, prolactin levels return to normalcy anywhere between 24 to 72 hours. So if there is persistence of hyperprolactinemia after 72 hours, then the drug primarily may not be the reason for hyperprolactinemia. In that case, look for alternative causes. If it is caused by a typical antipsychotics, see remember typical antipsychotics mainly act through dopamine receptors. I had listed it in the causes, they are all dopamine antagonists. So if a typical antipsychotic is causing hyperprolactinemia and in that case stopping the drug may not be practically possible, in that case you can switch to atypical antipsychotics which have action apart from dopamine, they also act through serotonin receptors. So atypical antipsychotics can be considered if there is hyperprolactinemia because of typical antipsychotics. When we decide to treat hyperprolactinemia, usually we decide to treat hyperprolactinemia if there is hypogonadism. I am not talking about prolactinoma. I am talking about hyperprolactinemia because of other causes. So if in that case we decide to treat if there is hypogonadism or if there is reduced bone mineral density. So what are the options we have? We have dopamine agonists and that those include two classes ergot derivatives which include bromocriptine and cabogolin and non-ergot derivatives which includes quinagolide. In the recent exam there was a question and the question was about which of the following dopamine agonist is not used for treatment of hyperprolactinemia or prolactinoma I don't remember specifically and one of the option was pergolide which is not effective in treating hyperprolactinemia. So we have three important effective drugs that is bromocriptine, cabogolin and quinagolide. Pergolide is not effective. So all these three class of drugs, bromocriptine, cabogolin and quinagolide are dopamine agonists. Bromocriptine is used in a dose of 2.5 to 15 milligrams per day and it needs BD or TID administration. So we have to give them at least at the interval of 8 to 12 hours. It is one drug which is available for parenteral use. So if there is a question asking you which of the following dopamine agonist is available for parenteral use, then that is bromocriptine. The main disadvantage with Bromocriptine is that it is an ergot derivative and hence it causes ergot like side effects which includes nausea, headache, postural hypotension, constipation because it needs frequent administration like a daily BID or TID it is associated with poor compliance from the patient side. What are the advantages of it? It has a proven long term efficacy. So this was the first drug that was that came into practice and because of that it has data backing its efficacy. There are concerns about fibrotic reactions in various tissues including valvulopathies. At doses that we use for treating hyperprolactinemia, it is not a major concern. The second drug, cabogolin, which in several studies has shown that it is more effective in reducing prolactin levels and if, it, if we have to talk about prolactinoma, it is more effective in shrinking the prolactin secreting tumor size. The advantage of this is that it can be administered in 1 to 2 doses per week. So at 250 to 1000 micrograms, we can give it as two doses per week regimen and that ensures that the patients get a better compliance. So because bromocriptin needs to be administered on a daily basis, the compliance is a concern. But when it comes to cabergolin, because it can be administered as two doses per week, compliance is a plus point. This is long acting, so missed doses are not a concern. And this has relatively lower incidence of ergot-like side effects. The slide mentions that there is limited data on safety in pregnancy, but as of now, there is emerging data proving that cabergolin is, if not superior, is as safe as bromocriptine when we have to treat a pregnant lady for hyperprolactinemia. This also is associated with cardiac valvular fibrosis, but not at the dose that we use for treating hyperprolactinemia, but at doses that we use to treat for Parkinsonism. The last drug is quinagolide, which is used at 50 to 150 micrograms per day. This also is administered once a day. Because this is a non-ergot drug, this does not have the common side effects that we encounter with ergot class of dopamine agonist. This has not been tried in pregnancy, so this is a strict contraindication. So if you have a question where they are asking which of the following dopamine 
agonist is contraindicated for management of hyperprolactinemia during pregnancy, then the answer has to be quinagolide. Cabagolin and bromocriptine both are relatively safe. Bromocriptine remains the drug of choice for pregnancy simply because there is staggering amount of data proving its efficacy, but data for cabagolin is also rapidly accumulating. So we can assume both of them are relatively safe.